One of my favorite things about the new 1.9 version of Generate Blocks and 1.7 of Generate Blocks Pro is the ability to use CSS Grid right inside the editor. Now, if you're new to CSS Grid, this tutorial might be a little bit more complicated than you're used to, but I would encourage you to watch it anyways. Grid does take a little bit of time to wrap your mind around, especially if you've learned Flexbox first. However, I think you'll learn a lot by just consuming more content on Grid and seeing all the ways it can be really advantageous to use it over over Flexbox in some situations. Today, we're gonna to be looking at one of those situations where Grid does something that Flex just can't, at least not as easily. So let's go ahead and take a look at this layout and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna solve this problem using CSS Grid. So I think it's gonna be easiest for us to start here inside Figma. What you see here is a pretty typical section. This white area here just represents my viewport, and you can see these red guide marks which represent the content width on my site. When I say content width, if you're used to using Generate Press, that's here inside Layout, Container, and they call it Container Width. In this case, on this site, it's 1200 pixels. I will often refer to that as my content width. And here inside Figma, I also had that set here to 1200 pixels. Now, generally when you're doing a layout like this, it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and duplicate this so we can look at all the pieces. What we'd first do is just drop in a container, which I'll just have this gray box represent. And then we drop in an inner container, which matches with the content width of our site here, which is about 1200 pixels. We'll just make that a little bit darker. Now this extra space on the left and right here, we don't really have to worry about sizing that. It's just anything that's left over from our max width of 1200 pixels here in the middle. This makes it really easy to just center content on our screen. And for a layout like this, that's gonna work perfectly. But what if instead we wanted this image to go all the way to the edge of the screen? Now things here get a little bit more complicated. And while this is doable with Flex, it's a lot more difficult than using CSS Grid. So let's talk about how we would tackle this the Grid way. With Grid, instead of setting this inner container in the middle, we'll get rid of that. What we're gonna do is set this outside container, this section, to have three columns. One over here for the padding on the left, one for the content in the center, and one for the padding over on the right. Now the magic part of Grid is that we can then take our content and tell it to live in between that column and the edge of the screen, which is exactly what we wanna accomplish with this layout. However, in order to do that, we do have to account for the size of this padding over here on the left and the padding over here on the right. That is a little bit more complicated in this CSS Grid version, but the ability to set up sections that are lined up like this, where content is here inside of our content width, and this image spans all the way outside of that to the edge of our screen, is so much easier in CSS Grid that I think it's worth the extra complication. Now, so far, we've just kind of been talking about this in theory, so let's hop inside the builder and start actually putting this together with CSS Grid. Starting here with a completely blank page, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop a container in first. This is where I'm gonna set the actual grid rules, but before we get into doing all that, let's just get the structure of our page built. I am gonna go down here to the advanced and under block label, I'm gonna label this section just so we can see it listed clearly here in the list view. Inside of that, I want another container, and this is gonna be our content wrapper. So here in the block label, I'm just gonna call it wrapper. Now inside of that wrapper, if we look back at our Figma file, we need a column on the left that's gonna house all of our text and a column on the right for our images. So let's go ahead inside this wrapper and add two more containers. There's one and I'll duplicate it to make a second. We'll go ahead and name this first one. We'll call this text wrapper. And for the second one, we'll call it image wrapper. Now they aren't side by side yet, but we'll get to that here in just a second. Let's finish getting all of our elements put in here. So inside the text wrapper, I know we need a heading. So I'm just gonna put heading goes here, followed by some website ipsum and a button. We're not gonna worry about styling all these things exact because we're really focused on this layout challenge. 
Now here inside the image wrapper, you would probably want to put an actual image, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to use a background image. And the reason being, I can't target the figure inside of the builder here. We would have to go out and write CSS for that. And I really want to focus in on this layout and not get caught up in all those what ifs. So I think it's a little bit easier just for the purposes of this demo to go ahead and add this image as a background image to this image wrapper. Okay, so now we have all our pieces in place and we need to start styling all this. I think the first thing we need to do is go into our wrapper here and get this text wrapper and image wrapper to be side by side. Now we can do this one of two different ways, but I am gonna start by adding a class. I will just call this wrapper for now. I would encourage you to name classes better than that, but I think it's just easier to call this wrapper and have it listed as wrapper over here in the list view, just for simplicity's sake. Now, like I said, we can tackle this one of two different ways. We could change this display to flex, which would put these two items next to each other, or we could use CSS grid here. Now I am gonna use CSS grid for this, but this isn't the CSS grid magic that I'm making this tutorial for. This is just a simple way for me to get these two items next to each other. In fact, we can just use the presets here and we'll choose this option here that's one FR on the left and three FRs on the right, which will make our image bigger than our text. Of course, we also need a gap between them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 80 pixels there. And I want this whole section to be quite a bit taller. So I'm gonna scroll down here to the sizing panel and change the minimum height to 600 pixels. Now we're almost done laying this wrapper out. I just wanna get this text inside the text wrapper to be vertically centered in here. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to our text wrapper. There's really no use in putting a class on this since it's kind of one-off change. So I'll just style this directly on the block and change this to flex, change the direction to column, align the items to flex start, and justify the content to center, which will center this vertically here inside the section. So, so far we got this layout looking really close to what we want. But if I go ahead and save this and we take a look on the front end, we'll see that everything is going to the edge of the entire viewport right now. And we wanna make sure that this text over here lines up with our content width, which we can see is kind of the title of our site here. I also see that we need to get rid of our page style here, which I'll do when we jump back in the editor. So let's go ahead and take care of that first. I'm gonna to go to page and content title. We'll go ahead and disable that. Refresh here so we can see that that's gone. All right, so here on our section, let's go ahead and add a class. So we'll call this class section just to match what our label is here. Of course, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to come up with something better than that inside your naming convention. Here under layout, we're gonna change this display to grid. And now all the magic's gonna happen here inside this grid template columns. Unfortunately, this does get a little bit complicated here and there's not much room inside this dialog box. So let's go ahead and write this inside of a text editor. So here, just to visualize it, let's use tabs and just write out our columns. We have column A, column B, and column C. And this kind of shows you how they're gonna be laid out on the screen. Column A and column C are gutters, like the padding on the left and right. And then column B is our actual content in the middle of the screen. So let's replace A with the rule we need to write for making our padding on the left-hand side. If we go back to our Figma drawing here, we need to remember that there isn't a absolute value for this padding. It isn't 24 pixels all the time. It's a minimum of 24 pixels, and then it needs to grow evenly with the right-hand side as the screen gets bigger. This way, the content in the center stays centered. So instead of just writing a pixel value here, like 24 pixels, we need to actually do a min max function. To do that, we write min max and then open and close parentheses. Inside this function, we need two values. We need our minimum value and our maximum value. So our minimum value we know is 24 pixels. We always wanna have at least 24 pixels of padding in this design. So when we get down to mobile, nothing's squished against the edge of the screen. However, when we're on a larger device, we need that to grow to help center our content in the center of the screen. So to do that, I'm just gonna do a 1FR here. This will work because we're gonna take this same declaration, copy it, and we're gonna make this the same thing for our column C, which is our third column here. So essentially on the left-hand side for our padding, we have this min-max function, and on the right-hand side for our padding, we have a min-max function that matches. Now we just need to tackle the content in the center. 
Here we also want to go between two different values, but this time we don't want a min max, we only want the minimum value. This gives our browser the ability to pick the minimum of two different values. So at the smallest, we want it to be 100% of the screen minus the padding on the left and the right. So let's go ahead and write this out as a math function, which we can do here inside of our min function. So what we'll do is we'll do 100% minus our padding, which is 24 pixels, times two, because we're gonna have padding on the left and padding on the right. Now, the reason I didn't just write 48 pixels and do that math is it would really make more sense in production to abstract these out into CSS variables, but I wanna keep everything as plain as I can inside this demo so that it makes sense. I just want you to see that we have padding on the left and the right, so we're multiplying that padding value by two and subtracting it from 100% of the screen. That's gonna be our minimum value for things like mobile. However, when we're on a desktop, we want this value to be 1200 pixels, which was our content width on the site. So essentially what our browser is gonna be able to do here is pick whichever is the minimum value, 1200 pixels or 100 minus our padding on either side. Now, I know that gets a little bit confusing, but this is where we need to be to get this magic to happen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up by getting rid of my tabs and just adding a space in between each one of these columns. Then I can copy this and paste it here into our grid template columns. Now, as you can see, this broke our layout, but this is where the magic of grid really shines. We can now go into our wrapper and tell it which grid cells to live in. Now, if you haven't counted grids before, let's jump back into our Figma document. When we're doing CSS grid, the first grid line is over here on the left, which is one. The next one we created is two. Here is three and the edge of the screen over here is four. So we want our content to live between two and four. So to do that, we'll go back into our wrapper, click into our wrapper class, and under the layout, we're gonna scroll down here to grid column. Like I said, we want this to live in two over four, which is going to make it span from our content edge here to the full edge of the screen over here. Let's go ahead and save this so we can see it in action on the front end. I'll go here to the front end and refresh. And you can see now our content is actually living inside this content wrapper on the left, but spanning all the way to the edge of the screen on the right, which is exactly what we wanted from our Figma file. If you've ever tried to do this with Flexbox before, you'll know that it's not that simple to make happen, especially not once we start talking about how to make this responsive. So let's go ahead and look at that next. I'm gonna go ahead and inspect this page and we'll make the browser really big here just to see how it would look on a widescreen. And this is exactly how we want it to behave. Now, as we get smaller and smaller and we get to our tablet breakpoint, which is around here, I'd say the two column layout still works, but we probably wanna go with more of a 50-50, 50% for our text and 50% for our image. Once we get down to mobile, we probably just want this whole thing to stack. So those are the two changes we need to do next to make this more mobile responsive. I'm gonna go back in here into the editor and with our wrapper selected and on our wrapper class, I'm gonna to go to the tablet breakpoint. Here we need to select display grid again and we're gonna change our grid template columns to a 50-50 layout, which is just this repeat to one FR, which you can get from the preset here. Now we also might have a little bit too much gap in the columns here. So maybe we'll change this to 40 pixels instead of the 80 pixels it was before. This completely takes care of the responsive for tablet. So let's tackle mobile next. We'll go ahead and go to mobile here. And as you can see, this is a little too squished. At this point, we probably wanna stack the content where the image is on the top and the text is down below it. We could do this either with Flexbox or Grid, but since we're focusing on Grid in this tutorial, let's go ahead and use Grid again here. Here, we'll change it to display grid, and we're just gonna change this to one FR. That way, each one of the children in here will take up one fractional unit. It will take up the full width that's available here. Now, as you can see, our image has gone to the bottom and the text is at the top. That's because that's how we have it here inside the DOM order, which is exactly what we want. However, visually, we want the image to come first. So what I'm gonna do is go to this image wrapper, 
go here to the order and I'm gonna change this to negative one, which will bring it to the top visually. We can see here, we still have quite a bit of a gap in between these two. And we have to remember we had a minimum height set on all this for our desktop version. So we might wanna just go ahead and clear that out now that we're on mobile. Of course, in doing that, now our image doesn't have a height at all. So I'm gonna go back to our image wrapper. Again, there's probably not a reason to put a class on for this demo. However, if you were repeating this across your site, you'd probably wanna do this with a class. But here we'll just style at the block level and say 250 pixels for a minimum height. Now we need a little bit of gap between the image and the text here. So we'll go back to our wrapper make sure we are selecting our wrapper class, and under layout, we'll give this a row gap of maybe 24 pixels. That looks pretty good. Now, if you'll notice here, we have one problem left to tackle. We have our 24 pixels over here, but this is actually going to the full edge of the screen. Here in the editor, you actually get a default padding here, but if I went ahead and updated this, and refresh it on the front end, and we got into our mobile version here, we'd see the text and the image are going all the way to the edge of the screen. And that's because we've set this to span from column two to column four. So let's go back into the editor here and under the wrapper class, I'm gonna go into layout and I'm gonna make sure the grid column is set to two over three. Remember the way we count our columns, this is one, two, three, Four. So we want this content to live between two and three when we get into mobile, which will make sure we have our 24 pixels of padding on the left and on the right. So let's go ahead and update that and save it. We'll refresh on the front end and we can see now this is lining up exactly like we want it. Hopefully all that made enough sense for you to be able to follow along. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're not used to CSS Grid, this can be a little bit intimidating. But once you unlock some of the powers that are inside CSS Grid that don't exist inside Flexbox, you start realizing that CSS Grid can really help us achieve layouts that were traditionally really difficult with Flexbox. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content like this, hit subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.